Today's film is Children of the Corn Runaway. Play the theme. Got in your views. Got in your views. All right, as always, if you want to watch the movie, check out the description below where I got links to where you can watch it, where you can buy the copy, you can rent it. So, Children of the Corn Runaway from 2018. Who knew there were so many Children of the Corn movies? I mean, I knew there were a number of them, but I didn't know that there were this many. Apparently, Dimension Pictures, they got the rights and they wanted to keep the rights, so they rush this movie out or so that they could just keep hold on to the rights. Apparently they also did this to a Hellraiser movie that they sort of filmed at the same time as this one. I may actually watch that one at some point. So, um, but this movie, uh, one of the things that's interesting, it was directed. I didn't know this until afterwards. It was directed by John Gulliger. And the reason for me that name sounds familiar is the movie Feast, which was featured in the 2005 season of Project Greenlight, the kind of reality show about making a movie. So he's still out there making movies. And the direction's fine. Okay, what is it about? Well, Ruth is our main character. She allegedly was one of the original Children of the Corn. I say allegedly because I don't think the actor certainly wasn't in the first movie. And I don't remember from the first movie if there was a girl named Ruth or not. Anyway, she ended up getting pregnant. And so she's like, I'm out of here. So she left. We catch up with her uh, several years later. Her son is... His age is indeterminate. He looks... Older, he looks like he's 14 or so, but then some of the scenes they show would be more appropriate for like a 10 year old. So I'm not sure how old he's supposed to be, but anyway, it's been at least a decade. And they have been on the run, moving from town to town because she thinks that the children of the corn are trying to find her. But we figure out later. Ruth has some uh, lasting trauma from being raised in a cult and having killed her own parents that she sometimes sees things. I'm so sorry. So we're not sure if the children of the corn are actually still after her or not. So Ruth and her son, um, they, I think they break down at one point and they, she happens to be a good mechanic. So they stay in this town and she becomes a mechanic and they start to get used to being there in this little rural town. But Ruth keeps seeing crazy kids, and we see scenes where kids are maybe doing, uh, killing people, kids are doing things, and so we're not sure, is this really happening, or is it all in Ruth's imagination? And so, but they settle down, the mechanic gives them, takes pity on them, gives gives her a job, and lets her stay in this house. But the other citizens of the town are kind of jerks to her. I'm saying that maybe you should think twice about setting down roots here in Luther. Maybe you should just take your little circus of crazy and hit the road. Except for a waitress at the local diner. Oh, I'm Sarah, by the way. Ruth. It's Aaron. So... Then, of course, it's dealing with children is what's going on. There's not a lot of scares in this. There are a couple scenes that are kind of creepy. There's one near the end where we see creepy kids being all creepy and stuff. And actually, I kind of wonder how they filmed it. Um, 
But somewhere in this movie, there is a good film about being poor and being a single mother. We will need proof of residency. Like what? Current utility bill, uh, lease, mortgage agreement. Something that verifies that you live in the school district. I don't have that. We just got here a couple days ago, so. Are you telling me that if I don't have a real home, I can't put my kid in your school? I don't make the rules, Miss Clausen. And also trying to deal with this childhood trauma that you are try and still trying to be a good parent. And, you know, horror movies can be really great at metaphorically dealing with these things. This one's just not one of the, that's not that movie. So I'm sure that movie is out there somewhere, but this is not it. I was kind of hoping that the, the more they dealt with the trauma, I was like, okay, it's going to be more into that. And it, it can almost be kind of a drama type thing. But towards the end, they start doing some twists that don't really pay off. I mean, they're, they're, they fall into the cliches rather than being interesting or thought-provoking. But like I said, there are a couple creepy things. For me, you know, if you recall the original Children of the Core movie, it wasn't just the kids were killing people. It's because they were sort of convinced that God wanted them or the man behind the corn or whatever, behind, behind the rose. I don't know. So there was that religious element, and this doesn't really have that too much. And so that it just comes creepy kids. And that sort of misses some of the, 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 you know, the depth of the original Children of the Corn. I originally watched this because I had remember heard that Kurt Wilmer, Wimmer had, uh, was making a remake of it. And Kurt is the director of Equilibrium, which I'm a big fan of. And so I was kind of like, oh, did that ever come out? Apparently, as of this filming, it hasn't really been released yet. So I was like, okay, let's watch one of the many, many Children of the Corn movies. And this is it. It's not terrible. So, I'm going to give it a two thumbs up. It has creepy kids, but it lacks the religion. But it could be worse. You know what would be worse? Not liking and subscribing or hitting that bell.